I'm not sure if it's short form content rotting our brains or it's the pressure of us having to maintain a 4.0, have a seven figure business, maintain a workout schedule, have a family life, social life, all while navigating not being burnt out. Our attention is pulled everywhere, whether it's apps trying to get it or us just trying to get our own attention. As someone with a hangry, dopamine gremlin. I will look for any hack I can get that will keep me focused on my work. And I may have just found the one that science says is so promising it could borderline hypnotize you. We'll get to it. Let me introduce you to binaural beats. And over the next seven days, I'm going to implement them into my work routine to see if they can make me 10 times more productive. I also have six tips I use every day to improve my concentration and productivity. And I'm going to bring you through that routine in the video. I could just go to YouTube and click sign like this, and we could just listen here. I went and built my own. <laughs> Day number one, step one. I opened Ableton and made a binaural beat. I try not to inflict the people in the office to my shenanigans, so how do I make it a bit more palatable? So I took a binaural beat, layered it underneath a lo-fi track I made, and I'm gonna listen to that all day just so I have a vibe and the science behind a binaural beat and see how much this helps me concentrate. So what is a binaural beat? It is the playing of a pattern of sound waves into one ear and the other ear is slightly off in frequency. The combination of these different frequencies in different ears actually gets integrated into the deep brain centers, increasing focus and concentration, which by increasing dopamine and acetylcholine, shown in multiple peer-reviewed studies, which was first brought to my attention in the Andrew Huberman episode, Tools to Improve Your Focus and Concentration. Okay, I just finished my first work bout of day number one. This isn't a good representation. Tuesday, I'm not burnt out from the week. Like Tuesday's optimum productivity for me. So this doesn't really say much. Um, so we built it, make it a vibe. And tomorrow we'll get a bit more into the nitty gritty and see if this really makes this week the most productive week I've ever had. And I'm gonna share some of my other takeaways from that video, but first let's get to day two. If you're like Kelty, I can't hear this binaural beat you're talking about. It's because you got to wear it with headphones. One frequency is going to be in one ear. The other frequency is going to be in the other ear. And it's the rattle in between the two in your ears that just creates that system. I heard about binaural beats from Huberman himself. And one way he uses them is prior to a workout, once he really wants to concentrate on contracting certain muscles. For five minutes before my workout, I listened to some binaural beats. I did this for a Pilates workout because that's the workout that requires the most mind muscle connection for me personally. And I gotta say, this was shockingly effective. See, meditation doesn't always work for me. I'm a very sensory person. Physical touch is my love language. So like, I just sometimes just need to be like squeezed <laughs> to be brought into myself. But something about the binaural beats pulsating between my ears just really snapped me out of my racing thoughts. Was this the best workout of all time? No. But morning workouts for me, I have a bad tendency of just thinking the entire time what I have to do on the to-do list for the day, just racing through my entire workday, not being in the moment. And it didn't occur to me to the last five minutes I'd spent the whole workout thinking about just the workout. Like I just, I, I was present. Speaking of how Huberman uses it, there's really three ways he uses binaural beats. First, five minutes before a workout. Second, five minutes before a work spout. I was under the impression this would just be going your entire day and you were just like hyper-focused. And that's why I was also like, that seems suspicious. But one of the biggest things, just like before the workout, it's like that five minutes of meditation coming in with yourself, really getting that feeling. So I'm gonna try that today. Let's do this. Productivity, here I come. It's been 90 minutes, but you know, I did my work. <laughs> Benefits of binaural beats include increased creativity and cognitive enhancement, reduce anxiety, and improve mood, helping you enter a meditative state, improve sleeping habits, helping to improve focus, attention, and memory retention. Speaking of the 90 to 120 minutes, there were several other tips in that Huberman episode that I implemented for almost a year now. So there's about six ones and I'm gonna bring you through a day in the life of how I use these tips to control my creative mind so I actually get my creative work done. Tip number one, obviously sleep. If I'm tired, I'm not concentrated, simple as that. Number two, his concept of treating focus like a workout and having to warm up for it. So for me, number one, sometimes I start with the easiest task like emails just to get me to physically go on my computer. Two for music, sometimes I just open Ableton and say, oh, all you have to do is listen to a song. And sometimes for YouTube, I'm just like, yeah, you just put some video files in a folder. And if I tell myself, oh, that's so easy, then there's not that hurdle of just getting started. And once I get started, I always end up just like 
hearing something in a song and then diving down. But it's just that initial hurdle to get over. Three, the 90 to 120 minute blocks of time. How that works out, I'll sit down, start working. And then after 90 to 120 minutes, I go for a walk, stretch, have a bite, annoy someone at the office. I'm not crazy about this. I don't put a timer, but now I'm just kind of conscious that I used to just keep going and going. And I realized I wasn't being productive. I was angry and I would hate my work. I would hate whatever I was doing. So the next day when I would go start again or after lunch, I would have this resentment because I just remember Remember that icky, awful feeling. But after 90, 120 minutes, I just stop, take a little breather, even a minute and get back into it. I find like I have that refreshed zest for it. Four, cold exposure. I've gone to the extremes of like going to a cryotherapy, but I just noticed just you need like, it's a little shock to the system. When it's winter here in Canada, I just pop outside, even for just 10 seconds. And it's just like, whew, I'm wide awake. Bonus, when it's not hot and we don't have AC in the office, I just go into the freezer sometimes and grab a chunk of ice or something cold and just put it on my head. Kind of weird, but it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, I'm new to this, but NSDR, he recommends NSDR meditation breathing. I did a whole episode on it, but after that 90 to 120 minutes, if I don't have time for a walk, I don't always meditate, but sometimes I just take a big deep breath, just pause. And when my mind is racing, I'm just like, whoa couple deep breaths and it does help. And number six, nutrition. Specifically for me, electrolytes. Cause yes, one nootropic that is very popular is caffeine. But your girl just doesn't even use caffeine for productivity or I just use it cause I can't live without it. <laughs> it doesn't actually help. I just can't be without it. But something that has helped me reduce my caffeine intake and in that afternoon crash and just help my workouts and everything is electrolytes because just like not getting enough sleep equals no energy for me not enough electrolytes equals no energy and my favorite electrolyte is element because of its science-based ratio of 200 milligrams of potassium 1000 milligrams sodium 60 milligrams of magnesium and what makes it different than other electrolytes it's at zero sugar zero fillers and zero artificial coloring i usually use it before or during a workout and a bonus i have an extra one right before bed if i've had a night of uh, drinking and it definitely helps the hangover my favorite flavors are orange citrus and chocolate also the grapefruit and me have been having quite the fair lately because I ran out of the chocolate because I love it so much. And it tastes so good. It's an easy habit. It helps my workouts reduce headache, reduce that fogginess and reduce muscle cramping. That was the big one. As long as I have electrolytes, I don't get severe muscle cramps anymore. And of course, I got a promo for you guys. If you go to my link, drinkelement.com slash Kelty, or use my link down in the description, you will get one of their sample packs for free with your purchase. That's a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Once again, that's drinkelementtea.com slash Kelty to get that deal. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. Okay, we're nearing the end of the work week and today's gonna be the true test for these binaural beats because I screwed up the first thing that works with focus, sleep. What the first rule my fight club is? No fight club! I just had an awful sleep, like, I don't know, I got home and was just texting my friends too much. I got to bed late. I actually started uh, Love is Blind. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm sore, I'm tired, I underslept, and I have so much work to do. Ugh. Here's my game plan. I already listened to five minutes and I've been working and I'm kinda like, uh. But Huberman did say on days he really needs concentration, he'll listen to it the entire time. But I have to edit? So I think that might be distracting while working. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna kind of sporadically, uh, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna see? My concentration is so bad I can't even think how to explain it to you. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it five minutes before my workout and then I'm just gonna listen to it quietly in the background while I edit, see what happens, let's go. Okay, update, that didn't really work too well. It, it just kind of messed with the sound and I'm very, very picky about my sounds in my videos, so it was a little distracting. This could work, but I think I'm gonna use it for like script writing, emails, research, things like that. Uh, not so much for video and music editing. My personal study has mixed results. So what does the science say? The jury's still out on the research. Huberman, I know, included some studies that showed the benefits, but then of course there's ones like this, the effects of gamma frequency, final beats on attention anxiety that showed they seem to yield no positive results. Now, I personally think music has an underappreciated value in terms of attention, burnout. Let me explain. When you think of rest, you probably think of your rest day from your workouts, maybe a Sunday. But just how this annoying beep in the background is also stimulating a different kind of rest. One's like stimulation rest. The seven different types of rest. Physical, mental, emotional, sensory, creative, social, and spiritual rest. I read the book Burnout and the author talked about the burnout cycle. Now I will insert it here, but lo and behold, one of the biggest definitions of burnout is just 
work without reward. It's, it's that doom. It's like every day I'm just working, I'm working, but for what? As long as you feel like you're getting rewarded for the work you do, it's sustainable. And I know for myself, I can get into that wormhole of like every week, it's just another Monday through Friday and I'm working and I'm making and I'm making videos and songs and da da da. I love what I do, but sometimes you just get in this hamster wheel of like go, 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 and there's no release, no reward. Now there's many ways she explained how you can just like every day end the burnout cycle and just give yourself a little reward. And the one that works for me is blasting music. It's just like a one minute, sometimes I go do a berries class, sometimes I'll do yoga with not the intention of even working, sometimes just blasting music on my walk home. This week, I had one of those weeks. It was just like, is this gonna be my life, the perpetual cycle? And it just felt very doom and there was too much and work deadlines, da 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 We all, I, I don't wanna bore you, you know. You experience it. You have those Monday through Fridays and you're just like, is this my life? And then I blasted some music with some heavy bass. And it cured me. It did cure me. Do, am I it cured from everything? No, but I just needed that like sensory feeling. I, and music provides that for me. It's just that release. And this is where I think like the binaural beats can work is it's just kind of that physical feeling. Would love to know down in the comments, like what's your equivalent? What's your little burnout? For some of you might be sitting in silent. For some of you might be buying a little treat. Some might be having coffee. Some might be calling a friend. Some might be hugging your dog. I know like physical touch is a nice one. Would love to hear down in the comments your guys is. And speaking of other options. So we all know white noise, but there's actually a multitude, multitude, multitude. <laughs> There's a multitude of different colors like pink and brown. White noise is a great option because it's consistent and can help mask noises. Like for example, the dump trucks that are outside my office right now. Pink noise might be a good option if white noise is too high pitch. And brown noise might be suitable for those who want something deeper. So let's ask the people in the office what color they prefer. Okay, rank them, worst to best. Worst is obviously the pink noise. That is absolutely disgusting. White noise makes me feel like I'm on an airplane, oh. which I love. Brown noise, number one, because it makes me feel like there's a fan in my room. And the, fa the fan noise, my contrarian take is I actually like pink noise quite a lot. I put it on often when I'm trying to get to sleep. It has an intense sound to me that reminds me a bit of being in the shower, and I like having showers. I find that very relaxing. But brown noise I like a lot as well, because I think it also has a similar sort of watery kind of vibe. Whereas white noise just seems too basic. Brown okay. is probably my number one, and pink I like second best, and white I like the least. Okay. Respect. <laughs> my ranking. Third place, sorry JJ, pink. Cause it seemed, it sounds artificial to me. Second white, because it, it, it's, it's white noise, basic. And brown seems deep and naturey. Something that like feels alive. And that's my rating. <laughs> Claims that a newly uh, discovered anti-aging therapy, aging. It's the price we pay for living. Harvard scientist David Sinclair has spent the last 20 years working to defy aging. Rejuvenated. Anti-aging. If there's one guaranteed in the health and wellness and productivity world, it's that if someone sees something that's slightly beneficial, people will hijack it and turn it into something they can sell you and is a major cure-all to all your problems. Snakes oil salesmen, opportunists, finance bros, whatever you want to call them. And <laughs> I didn't know noise. <laughs> would become one of these. So as I was just trying to just mix it up, try a new flavor. Like I tried new flavor pop, turns out it has twice the caffeine. I didn't know and I had major anxiety last week. Okay, anyways, I stumbled across this YouTube, Youthy. Anti-aging frequencies, stem cells, telomeres, body restoration. <sighs> and this is why we can't have nice things. There was the concept of clean eating. And I think all the world was trying to say was eat unprocessed whole foods. And then it went down the wormhole to like anything is processed is going to kill you. We just have a tendency to hear a word and just go with it. So anti-aging's become that and I'm trying to work on my longevity and improving my health span, but then everything is labeled anti-aging. Now that's the new it word, it's a buzzword. So just, we greenwash things and we stamp organic on everything and we ruin everything. <laughs> and this is one of those. Now I don't want to hate on this channel cause I, I just, I also fall into it. Cause I'm like, what else am I going to label? I've labeled things anti-aging, but do I think you listening to a frequency is going to change your stem cells? No. 
my basic, just going to university for basic science, I can tell you that much right now. Actually, I shouldn't, oh, someone's gonna clip this in 10 years. <laughs> Just a reminder, anytime you see any of these trends, anything like this, just realize like what is the initial root of it and what can it lead to? So my heart broke because I read the comments and there's so many being like, how much do I have to listen to this a day? And like, just, I just don't like when people waste their time and money and you know, influencers or the media or whoever preys on them and they think that's the solution. I'm like, no, no, but, 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 but. I will also defend things like this. The top comment, boom, was talking about them listening to it was giving them the best sleep of their life. And then they noticed all these health benefits and anti-aging and improving skin tone, yada, yada. And see, there it is. It's not listening to that is gonna help with your anti-aging, no. But listening to that could provide some white noise, some calming effects that allows you to get into slumber, be off your phone because your phone's playing YouTube, and then you sleep better. Because you sleep better, that is, that is the foundation of youth. We can all agree on that, is sleep. So after seven days, do I think this is worth you? Is this a tool in your toolkit to improve your productivity that will make you healthier, happier, better emotional health? The pros, number one, it's kind of forced meditation and just a different, you just sit there and be present and feel if you do it right before your work spout. Two, it just did that got me out of my head. Sometimes I get in my own head and I have these racing thoughts and I think of a thousand other things instead of just sitting down and getting the work done. And it was this pause and it just was enough stimulation in my head that it kind of got me out of my head. Not always, but it was a tool. Three, I need a little bit of distraction, just the tiniest bit. I hated studying in the library. I always had to study in the cafeteria because I just needed something going on. If I was in a dead silent library, no one moving, I was like, I would just find things that distract me. I'm like a pigeon that sees a shiny object. I'm like, ooh, but if it, like everything's shiny, I don't notice a shiny object. <laughs> so I just accept what's in front of me. And so I find like just a little bit of noise in the background. For me, that's, honestly, I, I live in downtown. You guys see how noisy this office is. Quiet, so that's kind of nice. And it's just a nice little bit of something in the background so I can't hear an empty abyss. For the cons, uh, for sometimes it does get overwhelming. Like, you know what I mean though? Sometimes like it's a buzz and you're just like, oh, stop this. Two, there's no quick fix. You're not gonna do this and suddenly become Einstein. You are not gonna write a book just because you listen to a frequency for five minutes. You are not gonna become Andrew Huberman just because you listen to some uns, 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 uns. I realize most of these productivity tools, all these productivity things we're constantly given are just that tools. They're tools in our toolkit. And I know for me, I'm not being productive. I'm not getting my work done. What are the tools in there? Did I get enough sleep? Should I just use a little caffeine? Should I do a little meditation? Turn on a binaural beat? And they're just like little tools. And for me, occasionally I'll use this tool too much so that it becomes dull and it's completely useless because like I, I know how to hijack around it. Like I know how to lie to myself. And then that's when you pull another tool and use that tool for a little bit till it's useless. And then, hey, the other tool had time to sharpen and you bring it back. And I think the more tools you can kind of have, it's just tools in your toolkits, but they're not solutions. They're not like you listen to binaural beats and you will never not be productive again. And I used to think that. I used to think I was one software program away from ultimate productivity. And and then I realized a lot of times I waste time trying to be productive that I'm not productive. For example, I used to use this software online organization called Asana and ClickUp. And they're both the complete waste of my time because you spend so much time organizing, color coding, moving things around. And that will work for some people. But I just found like I wasted like hours a day just organizing my to-do list. And you feel productive, you feel you got things done. And I step back and I'm like, I don't need another area for this. This is a waste of my time. So I know you use Notion, this is not a plug for Notion, but it's just a blank white checklist. You can pretty much make it. And I just do it like that. What I need to do for the day, remind me to do it, carry over to the next day because our checklists are now forever not. So here's a tool in your toolkit. If you guys want, I did make the 90 minute binaural beats with over top of some lo-fi, because that was the one thing. I was like, what happens if you want to listen to this, but you want a little lo-fi? I feel it. you kind of want to make it a vibe. Anyway, so I will link that down below to my music channel, which I have workout streams. And now that I've graduated from music production school, I'll be doing a lot more for you guys there. Listen to it next time. Let me know your thoughts. It has the binaural beats and just some vibes over top because science is cool, but vibes are better. <laughs> have a great day. Go pet a dog. Love you guys. Bye.